Hey guys, welcome back to DCS World. I'm Spud Knocker, as always, and today we're going to take a look at employing air-to-air -air weapons and air-to-ground weapons in the F-18C Hornet. The F-18C, being one of the first true strike fighters, is equally good at employing air-to-ground weapons as well as air-to-air -air weapons, and so, as a pilot of the F-18C, we need to know how to employ both. Now we've got a couple cool user-made skins on our jets that we're uh, showing off today. They're from the VFC-12 Fighting Omars from NES Oceana in Virginia. And I'll leave a link to those down below. The skins are the kind of stereotypical flanker skin, as well as the SU-34 duckbill skin. So, without further ado, we'll go ahead and hop in the cockpit and get started. Okay, now that we're in the cockpit, we'll go ahead and get started. So, first thing we'll do is we'll make sure that our navigation systems are up and running. And we'll make sure that our countermeasures are ready to go. Another thing we also want to make sure is our master arm is set to on before we fly into combat. Uh, you can take a more in-depth look at my countermeasures video here as well as uh, what you need to do to make sure you're ready to go before you fly into combat here. So when it comes to my radar, I like to put it into a four bar scan as I'm flying out into combat, push it up to about an 80 nautical mile range. For the side sweep, you can do 140 degrees or 80 degrees. I like 140 because it gives me a real nice wide view of the area out in front of me. If you do need a quicker scan, you can definitely bring that down to 80 degrees and bring your bar down to like two. So the US Air Force was kind enough to lend us a couple QF-4s and a QF-16 to play the role of the interceptors. So uh, without further ado, we'll go ahead and take it out of autopilot. And we'll push our throttles up. Now we can see we have a threat on our radar that's going to be that QF-4 that's out there. So in order to slew our TDC around, uh, without going into air-to-air -air mode, we can go ahead and press our castle switch to the right, or center select switch, whichever you'd like to call it, and now we can slew our TDC around. So there's our target. We'll go ahead and lock him up. And we can see on our HUD here that he's a diamond shape. A diamond means that he's a bandit. A square would mean that he's a friendly. So we know that he's an enemy and we're ready to go there. Now a lot of people tend to overestimate the range of the AIM-7 Sparrow. Uh, some publications and sources put it at about 28 miles for a maximum range. But that would be under the most ideal of circumstances. Flying way up high, you're the launching jet is nice and fast, and the target coming at you is also fast, coming straight head on and not maneuvering. For a kill shot with the Sparrow, you want to make sure that you're pretty close, closer than you'd think, between uh, probably eight and five miles is my best guess for that. It tends to work for me the best. However, if you're getting engaged in BVR, and the enemy aircraft is locking you up and you're worried they're going to uh, fire a missile at you, then go ahead and fire that missile at a long range. And that will put the enemy on the defensive and keep them from firing at you. Even if the missile misses, it's done its job, it's kept you alive, and you can continue on to the target and engage it then. So as we can see on our HUD here, he's about 14 miles. We do have a shoot cue, but in my opinion, we're still a bit far out. But to get him on the defensive, we'll go ahead and fire a missile. We'll call over the radio, Fox 1, so that our friendly pilots around us know that we've fired a missile, and they don't get freaked out when they see a missile streaking off into the sunset in front of them. So we can see that our bandit is definitely on the defensive now. Hopefully the missile has the energy to engage him as he's maneuvering.
He's really diving for the deck. So the missile definitely missed. So we'll go ahead and fire our second missile. Fox one. And splash one F4. So now we've got another bandit out here attempting to intercept us, and that is the QF-16. So we'll go ahead and return to search mode, and we can see that bandit on our scope already. We'll go ahead and reduce the range so we get a better idea of how far out he is. So since we're out of AIM-7s, we'll go ahead and bring up the AIM-9Ms that we have on board. We'll go ahead and lock him up, and we can see he's about 15 miles out. However, I'm going to drop the lock so that we can practice using our air-to-air -air combat modes. So to enter air-to-air -air combat modes, you want to press up on your sensor select switch or your castle switch to bring it into foresight mode. Once you're in air combat mode, then you can then pull back on the sensor select switch to go into vertical acquisition, left to go to wide acquisition, and you can, of course, redo the thing by pushing it forward to go back into foresight, etc. You cannot go directly to wide acquisition or vertical acquisition. You first have to go into foresight mode to turn air combat modes on. So we'll go ahead and point our nose at this F-16. And... Fox 2 on that F-16. And he's popping flares. And the missile was spoofed. So now we're merged, and we'll go ahead and get into a little dogfight with him. Definitely want to keep our eye on him, as the old adage goes. Lose sight, lose the fight. We'll come in on him. Fox 2 again. And Splash 1 QF-16. He's fallen in pieces. So since we're out of air-to-air -air missiles now, we're going to have to resort to going back to our air-to-air -air gun. There's another F4 out here, so we'll go ahead and go into gun. When you go into gun, your radar automatically goes into wide acquisition mode, or gun acquisition mode. So I can see him out there. Another skill that is definitely a good thing to know is choosing the correct air-to-air -air weapon for the range you're at. If you merge with, with a bandit, you're probably not going to want to use your AIM-7s anymore. probably want to go with your Sidewinder. And if you're even closer than I would say probably 0.9 nautical miles, you probably want to switch over to guns, as your Sidewinder won't have enough time to acquire the target and maneuver at it. Sparrows can be effective in dogfights, but I would say probably not a good idea to launch a Sparrow at a target unless you're farther away than about two nautical miles. That's where I've had the best success with them anyway. So we'll go ahead and lock this guy up. So, as you can see there, our gun funnel then turned into an actual reticle once we lock him up. And it's just like any other type of gun sight you've used. It's very similar to the Mirage 2000C, the one in the F-15C, and even the F-5. It's really not all that different. It's just a digital version of what's in the F-5. So we'll come around. 
and we'll go ahead and engage this F4 with guns. and splash one QF4. The M61 Vulcan cannon in the nose of the F-A-18 fires at an extremely high fire weight, so there's no need to hold down the trigger for a long time and absolutely pepper a target. Even a short burst like that is more than enough to destroy any type of aircraft you come up against. So we'll go ahead and take this out of air-to-air -air mode, and we know that our target on the ground is near waypoint 1, so we'll go ahead and fly back towards waypoint 1 here. So I just went back into air-to-air -air mode to rebring up our scan. So we'll flip over to our stores page, we'll grab our markety freeze. So now that we have everything set and ready to go for our Mark 83s, all we need to do is go into air to ground mode in order to bring up our reticle for dropping the bombs, which would be our CCIP reticle. This is the very simple put the thing on the thing to kill the thing type of bombing. Nothing too fancy here, but it's the kind that you'll be using most often uh, in early access here. So we'll go ahead and roll in on that target. So all four bombs are away. Now we are much, much lighter. Looks like a pretty good hit on that convoy. And now we'll go ahead and fly on home. Back to NAS Fallon. A few things to note. When you're choosing your loadout for a strike mission in the F-18C is you, if you are potentially going to face bandits on your way into the target area or on your way out of the target area, I would highly recommend it against taking rocket pods, especially uh, double rocket pods on a brew. They are extremely draggy. They have a big flat front on the front of them, especially the Lao 61s, and they can definitely hinder your performance, even more so than the bombs. Mark 83s, the Mark 80 series in general, were developed in the mid-1950s to be as aerodynamic as possible for hanging on the racks of fighter bombers. Uh, they replaced the older World War II style bombs that were very short and fat and not very aerodynamic, and the performance that you get while carrying Mark 83s is much, much better than you would, say, uh, a, a cluster of rocket pods. Or even Mark 20s. Mark 20s are quite fat and round bombs, just like older World War II bombs. So keep that in mind and make sure that you don't weigh your aircraft down too much with bombs.
I see a lot of times in multiplayer servers, in screenshots I've seen online, and videos on YouTube, that uh, people definitely do weigh their aircraft way, way down with tons and tons of bombs. Even if it's far more than you really need for that mission. And that just degrades your performance and your ability to defend yourself against both enemy aircraft as well as SAMs in the target area. So just keep that in mind next time you fly on a multiplayer server or you create a, a fun little single mission for yourself. So I hope this video helped you guys out. I hope you had a fun time watching it. If you did like it, please like and subscribe. And fly safe, everyone. Enjoy this awesome jet. Thanks a lot, guys.